Good day everyone, in this video I want to talk about a new pretty amazing vehicle that will be coming out in the next major update in War Thunder. And that is the vehicle that has inspired the main design of the Star Destroyer itself. The ship I'm talking about is the USS Texas, the ship that has been built right around the outbreak of World War I. A ship that was only one of the two alongside the sister ship the USS New York. USS Texas was the first US battleship that mounted anti-aircraft guns during World War I and it was also the first ship to control the gunfire with rangefinder and directors, which is the start of our today's modern way of targeting and rangefinding our weapons. That is also a ship that has been commanded to flood the torpedo blisters on the starboard side, just to get some additional few angle degrees so that it could continue the heavy shelling in the Normandy once the Allied forces managed to push a bit further into the Axis occupied land. Later on, the USS Texas has been moved to the Pacific theater so that it will bring in the heavy artillery support during the invasion of the Iwo Jima and Okinawa. In the end, the ship has been decommissioned in the 1948, however it has been converted into a permanent museum ship and has also been the first to be declared as a national historic landmark. That is also the only one remaining World War I battleship slash dreadnought that is still in its physical form. However, aside of the entire introduction, within the game, the ship will have an excellent amount of 10 heavy primary battery guns of 356mm caliber. In addition, it will be equipped with an extra 6 127mm cannons and 10 76mm cannons that are dual purpose, meaning that can also be used as the anti-air cannons. As for the proper anti-aircraft defenses, this ship will be equipped with 10 quad 40mm bofer and 44 single 20mm cannons. And I must say personally that if that ship was on the enemy side, I would never want to even come close to it. In addition, Ganjin has given us a tiny tip over here saying that if your boat does not have a good anti-air defense capabilities, you can always use the USS Texas as an anti-air shield sort of thing. However, with the things, you know, with how the things are going currently in the game and with the actual anti-air defense capabilities for pretty much almost every uh, every naval ship, um, I'm pretty sure that the actual chances of having a decent amount of aircraft within the naval battles will be uh, fairly low. So technically, I I like the actual the idea of having a large amount of AA guns. However, I don't think that will be as necessary at this point. The ship has also got a very impressive amount of armor ranging from 305 to 356 mm around the main components of the ship such as the main belt and the turrets. The ship's crew amount is rather impressive due to the fact that it is formed of 1810 sailors which gives the ship a perfect combat endurance. However, 1810 sailors is a large amount and to me at least it, it does sound pretty impressive and that could be almost like an entire large village or like a small district in a town. I mean, we talk about like almost 2,000 people being on a boat. So that is a that is a huge amount of people. Um, however, due to all of the heavy armor, the fuel and the ammo and many different factors such as the, you know, having pretty much almost 2,000 people on board, well, the ship is going to be fairly slow, reaching only up to 39 kilometers per hour or 21 knots. In addition, another disadvantage that comes with its low speed and its low maneuverability and its size and its weight and all the other stuff like that, um, it means that the ship will be extremely low when it comes to its maneuverability. And it will perhaps, and not perhaps, it will very likely become an easy target for bombers, uh, torpedoes or anything that actually manages to get close to it. Um, so that's one of the major disadvantages. Personally, I must say that I'm rather excited about the ship. It's just a shame that I don't research American naval vehicles anymore and mainly focus on the German ships. And one of the painful things about, you know, researching the naval tech trees is the fact that it does indeed take ages to do it. And I honestly, as an adult, I don't really have that much time in my life to actually do sort of things like that. Um, However, I'm still really excited about the ship and I would love to see it in the action. And for now, I've got to say, I hope that you all had enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Wash your hands. Okay, we'll fall for signing out.